What's cracking everybody and welcome back to the channel for today's video We're gonna be checking out the Transformers Legacy Evolution Deluxe Class Origins Autobot Jazz This guy is a part of the Buzzworthy Bumblebee subline So I'm hoping won't be too difficult to track down But how awesome is it to see a Cybertronian Jazz? You know after we were done with Siege I thought we would never see this guy but here he is in 2023 And I guess considering we've seen Origins Bumblebee now this guy Origins Wheeljack is hopefully on the cards next really hoping for that guy but as we take a look here at the box art, we get a sick piece of artwork of Jazz in both vehicle as well as robot mode. It kind of begs the question why they didn't just go ahead and put this guy in the main line because I don't think there would have been any issues in selling him at all. But maybe that's why he's an exclusive. And then here at the back, we get some cool images of him in robot vehicle mode as well as that cheeky Evo Fusion, which we've seen for some of the other Evolution characters. And here for this side, you know, typical of Buzzworthy Bumblebee, we get a whole host of characters, Prime, Megatron, Bumblebee and RC. So I'm really excited to check this guy out and let's take a look at him in his robot mode and here we have Cybertronian Jazz and much like his portrayal in the series a really cool looking figure I mean I have a few issues as far as the transformations put together but for the most part probably one of our strongest standalone deluxe legacy figures to be released this year and it does just suck these an exclusive you know I'd love to know how characters repaints such as twin cast and crosscut can make it into the main line of legacy where they're readily available but a big name character such as Jazz and one which is a brand new mold is designated to a very niche subline which at least here in the UK I have never seen on store shelves you know it does beg the question how they work that out but you know if you are lucky enough to find this guy I would definitely recommend to pick him up so as we take a look here at the bot mode for the most part I think this guy is like 98% brand new with maybe the exception of the head sculpt which has been painted really nicely. I love the attention to detail of the continuity error of him still retaining the Earth Mode chest despite this being the Cybertronian form, you know. That detail is so nicely done, sculpted and painted wickedly. And, you know, maybe if you didn't pick up the Studio Series version, just as a G1 Jazz standing from the front, this guy looks pretty great. I mean, the illusion would be a little lost as we come here to the side because we have a few of the Cybertronian components, which I think stack up pretty nicely. I mean, the kibble is not as bad as the Origins Bumblebee, and for what that guy was, I didn't think his kibble was too bad either. So, yeah looking pretty cool now articulation wise we do get a ball joint here so it can look up and down side to side rotate left to right really nice hinge joints out of the shoulders they can go out to the side a very sturdy bicep joint 90 degree bend there out of the elbow sadly nothing out of the wrist but due to transformation we kind of get a fake butterfly joint so i thought that was pretty cool and then there's a waist joint which is completely uncompromised despite having this kind of kibble the hips can kick forwards that far as well as can kick back to that far, so nothing's restricted. They can also kick out to the sides. We get a bit of thigh rotation. Unfortunately, not quite to 90 here at the knee, but I mean, it's an adequate range. You can definitely get all of the poses that you'd want. And then finally, we get some really nice deep angle pivot, which pretty much allows you to get this guy in any pose that you'd want. So articulation wise, you know, besides the lack of wrist rotation, this guy has everything you'd expect from your average generations deluxe. Now, as we quickly go through accessories, first of all, we get the Cybertronian Blaster, which is pretty standard for most Transformers figures. Nicely sculpted, but unfortunately lacks any kind of paint. But the best one he comes with is finally Jazz's Grappling Hook. This was something which was absent from the Studio Series version, so awesome to see it here with Origins Jazz. And surprisingly, it is two distinctive components. So we get the base of it, and then we get the actual Grappling Hook itself. And what's even better is the way it integrates into the figure. So if you take any of the hands, it doesn't matter which one, and basically transform it, it does reveal this nice Mechtech port, which we can take this and just smack it into. So I really liked that, you know, it actually looks like it's transformed out of the arm like it did back in the show. And his Evo Fusion gimmick is to take the tip of the grappling hook and basically smack it into his blaster to give you the impression that perhaps it's a larger harpoon or maybe like it's been deployed, you know, if you whack a few blast effects on there. I imagine that could come out with some pretty cool effects. But something I thought was worth mentioning is that the hands have been keyed or sculpted in a certain way, which would make you believe that they operate in a specific way. But no, all of the weapons are just a circular port and you don't need this for transformation. So I'm not sure why they sculpted them like this. Maybe it's some evidence of a bit of pre-tooling. I guess only time will tell. Now, comparison-wise, here we have Origins Jazz alongside his Studio Series counterpart. Just so you guys can see how they look like from the sides. 
the backs as well as of course the front so like I said previously literally brand new with maybe the exception of the head sculpt and I know you guys are going to be wondering if it's possible to swap out the weapons from Origins Jazz specifically the grappling hook with the studio series version and unfortunately not at least without any customization so despite the kind of transformation working the same studio series Jazz doesn't have a port and he has his hand held in via a pin so unless you pop the pin out maybe it's possible but at least to me it seems like the forearms are a little different in terms of whip I mean Origins Jazz looks just a little chunkier but you know if you do try it and you're successful let me know down below and I'll try my best to see if I can get it working on my copy and hey maybe I'll come back with an update video here he is alongside the Origins Bumblebee. So at the moment, quite a nice sub-team of Cybertronian characters. It looks like they're going back to some of the ones that maybe they missed out for the Siege toy line. So, you know, Willjack, a big name character, Hasbro. You've got to give us Willjack now. You've committed to giving us Bumblebee and Jazz. And let's be honest, you know, out of the three Cybertronian characters from that first episode of G1, Willjack is definitely the one that we all probably wanted the most. But until then, here we have the Earthrise Willjack, just so you guys can see how they stack up from an average deluxe to deluxe ratio. Here he is alongside the Siege slash Legacy Soundwave, just as we'll need this guy for a few vehicle mode comparisons. If you know, you know. And finally, here he is alongside a figure which I haven't needed to bring out for quite some time, the Siege Cybertronian Optimus Prime. So, like I said previously, it's great to see more Cybertronian-based alt modes back in the Transformers Generations line. And, you know, once eventually, hopefully, they do give us Wheeljack, don't stop there. Give us some of the other characters, which, sadly, we never saw get a Cybertronian take in that original Siege toy line. I'm definitely open for it. Now, when it comes to transformation, unfortunately, this is where my praises for the figure are a little low, just because they still haven't learned from some of their past mistakes. There is a vital piece of the transformation, which is held together by an entire piece of transparent plastic, and at least to me, it just feels like it's going to self-combust at any minute, but we'll be sure to get into that in just a second. To kickstart things off with, you're going to want to take the hands and just rotate those inwards. Once you've done that, you can rotate the bicep and basically break the elbow joint backwards, just like this do the same on this side so hinge the hand in rotate the bicep and then arch backwards at the elbow joint you now want to take his head rotate it so that the front is now facing the back and take the fake chest unit pull this entire section upwards you'll now want to take here the shoulders use that butterfly joint and just pull those inwards which gives you great access to the backpack so for this you're going to want to loosen it up at these points and then there's also some tabs on the underside that you'll just want to lift up to also detach those once you get to about this point now is where you're going to want to take the windscreen and this is an area which i absolutely hate it's basically flexing this transparent unit over solid white plastic so for this you're just going to want to apply a little bit of pressure to the corners and snap them in i mean why they couldn't have used pop out blue pieces on top of a proper piece of white plastic is beyond me i mean maybe it's a cost cutting measure i'm not too sure maybe because the figures are deluxe it's too small to do that but i just don't like that this is basically transparent plastic keeping most things held together but once you've done that there is a tab which is created out of the fake chest which is going to slide into this slot here so just snap that in there just like that now what you're going to want to do is come here to the legs now the toes due to the thickness of the paint may actually detach themselves from the tiny little nubs if they do you know just put them back on but just fold these toes down and do the same here for this side you'll then want to arch this outwards a little bit to get access of this as you'll basically want to unhook this from the shin bring this section here out and then take this panel fold this section out and then snap that back in do the exact same here for this side so attach this piece fold out this section and then snap it into place collapse that down and now snap the two halves together now much like kingdom cyclonus basically you're going to want to wriggle these knee joints inside the entire rear of the vehicle which can be a little difficult to do but you know just kind of shimmy these here as back as they possibly can go and now is where i'd recommend to maybe mistransform this front portion so just lift this section upwards and much like the 86 ironhide these tabs need to slide under this and the clearance is near enough minimal so you're just going to want to snap them in there it can be quite difficult to detach them when going into reverse transformation but i'll be sure to showcase that in just a second now what you're going to want to do is we have these slots here which are going to peg into these tabs so just snap that one in and snap that one in and what's going to happen here is that this tab is going to peg into that slot and then these ones need to slide under this now this is where i'd recommend lifting this up a little bit just to allow for a bit of clearance so snap that in there 
and then do the same here for this side, snap that in, and now take the front part of what will become the vehicle mode and slide that over the top. And I'm hoping that it will just all compress in very nicely. Let's see how this is all going and then click it in. And there is Jazz, fully transformed up into his pretty cool Cybertronian kind of futuristic hairdryer, maybe mini vacuum cleaner, but it looks great. I mean, you know, if you cast your minds back to 2018 where we'd see these futuristic vehicles in Siege, this guy fits right in. Really nicely detailed. I mean, this is what it looks like from the side. Not too much undercarriage kibble. You know, I think there would have been way more had they decided to plant some wheels. So, yeah, I'm glad they went with the design choice to leave them out. We do get some nice details at the front. You know, the fake earth mode chest doesn't really stick out at all. And despite the qualms I have with the transparent plastic during transformation, without a doubt, it looks great in vehicle mode. It is, again, just such a shame they don't use clip-on pieces onto, you know, maybe a proper piece of plastic so that we don't have to worry about this stressing or cracking during transformation. But paint apps, for the most part, turned out pretty clean and this is what this guy looks like from a back you know we get this massive rear spoiler and a few ports so you can smack in some blast effects if you'd want now in terms of weapon storage as we come here to the underside we get this huge port which is perfectly sized for the grappling hook and then as far as the blaster goes it's a little you know less impressive it simply does just peg here onto the top but i guess it's some kind of stealth mode for jazz to have when on cybertron Comparison wise, when in vehicle mode, we have Origins Jazz alongside his Studio Series Earth Mode counterpart. Here's his Origins buzzworthy mate, that being Bumblebee. So in terms of two Cybertronian vehicles, they're looking really cool. I'm hoping considering these two are brand new molds, that if we do get Wheeljack, he also will follow. Which talking of, here's the Earthrise Wheeljack, just to give you guys a sense of scale perspective. Here's the Voyager class Cybertronian Optimus Prime. So yeah, these guys really do fit right in with each other. And just for fun, here he is next to that kind of Siege Cybertronian sound wave in the lamppost mode. Because in the show, we see this guy kind of zooming past and one of them does just so happen to be Soundwave in disguise. Now let's turn to reverse transformation where I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to help you guys in basically transforming this without breaking anything. So the way I've found to do it is first of all come here to the front of the vehicle and just gently lift this section here up. It will basically just free the tabs up from the doors instead of you prying them out. So once that's done that should allow you to basically just hinge these sections out. We can now disengage the arms from what were originally the knees. So just attach that and now throwing back to my earlier point of this basically being a very similar situation to SS86 Ironhide removing these pieces from the clear tabs is such a pain so you really do just have to kind of wriggle it up and over and once you've done that basically most of the scary part is over we can take the rear and just extend these here all the way out flip here upwards detach these components and then much like we did previously angle those ankle joints out bring these around, fold these panels in, and that little slot there is gonna peg into that tab. So snap that in. We can now take the toes and hinge these sections out. It's very difficult to do so again, due to the thickness of the paint, but just bring those around, do the same here for this side. So fold this panel in, snap it into place, and then flip out the toe on both sides. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do, to be honest, there's no easy way to really get around this, is take the windshield and bring it forwards and then collapse it in upon itself. So a little bit of pressure again on this transparent piece, not the biggest fan of it, but just collapse it upwards. We can then take the backpack, shift it backwards, and there are some tiny little tabs and slots which are gonna slide in there first, and then these ones are gonna slide onto kind of the side of the back. So snap them in there, bring these pieces out, take the grappling hook if you haven't done so already. We can then take the chest unit, pull this section down, rotate at the head, rotate here at the biceps, and then just flip out the hands. And this time around, unlike the Studio Series version, they do click into place on both sides and there is origins jazz back in robot mode and wrapping up on this review for the transformers legacy deluxe class origins jazz for the most part i'd say this is probably an 8 slash 9 out of 10 figure i mean the robot and the vehicle mode are great and it's so awesome to see them continuing this kind of sub line of cyber training characters which we never saw in the siege toy line you know we saw origins bumblebee in 2021 most of us myself included thought that maybe it was a leftover from that 2018 line but 
here with Jazz, I think it pretty much confirms that they're going to try their best to give us all of those Cybertronian based characters that we saw in the very first episode of G1. That, of course, being Wheeljack. So, very exciting times ahead. Robot mode on this guy looks great. Not too much kibble, which is awesome. You know, average articulation, decent accessories. I really like how the grappling hook kind of integrates into the robot mode. The transformation for me is really what lets this guy down. I don't like that a vital piece of the conversion is held together by this big chunk of transparent plastic. And you guys saw there's a lot of flexing and a lot of holding together. It has to do some tabs really have to kind of be jammed into their pegs and then really wriggled in order to detach them. I'm just not the biggest fan of that, but the vehicle mode looks awesome. You know, that kind of freaky looking Cybertronian vacuum cleaner. So yeah, overall, it's a good figure if you can get past the transformation. And I guess if you just take your time with it, it should be good. But I'm hoping Hasbro eventually can phase out transparent plastic holding together vital components of the engineering. I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of Origins Jazz? And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.